John gave us the spiritual side, what he's been going through. Let's look at what the History Channel... Now, there's a lot of debate on how Halloween started. This is the most solid information I could find that's been validated by the History Channel. They say, um, by the way, the pronunciation of this, it looks like Sam Samhain, but it's Samhain. So, this is how Halloween started. Samhain is a pagan religious festival originating from ancient Celtic spiritual tradition. In modern times, Samhain is usually celebrated October 31st to November 1st to welcome in the harvest and to usher in the dark half of the year, which John just talked about how the last end of the year is the dark half of the year celebrants believe that the bear listen to this this is the origination of halloween celebrants this is from history channel believe that the barriers between the physical realm and the spiritual realm break down during Samhain, allowing more interaction between humans and the other world creatures ancient celtics mark Samhain as the most significant of the four quarterly fire festivals taking place at the midpoint between the fall equinox and the winter solstice during this time of year hearth fires and family homes are left to burn as the harvest was gathered after the harvest was complete celebrants joined the druid priests come on guys listen to this to light a community <laughs> fire using a will that would cause friction and spark flames the will was considered a representation of the sun and used with prayers cattle were sacrificed so animals were sacrificed and they took flames from the communal bonfire back to their um heart uh, their hearth Early texts present Samhain as a mandatory celebration that lasted three days and three nights where the community was required to show themselves to the kings and chieftains. Failure to participate in this holiday was believed to result in punishment from the gods resulting in illness or death. There was also a military aspect in Ireland. Uh, because the Celtics believed the barrier between worlds was breachable during Samhain, they prepared offerings, sacrifices, and they left them outside of villages for the fairies. It was expected that ancestors might cross over. So spirits of your ancestors might cross over during Halloween. And the Celts would dress as animals. This is where dressing up started. They would dress as animals and monsters so that fairies were not tempted to kidnap them. So they thought these spirits, these fairies were going to show up and kidnap them. So they would dress like these, an these spirits as monsters or animals. Some specific monsters associated with the mythology surrounding Samhain, including a shape-shifting creature called Puka that receives harvest from the field. The Lady Gwyn is a headless woman dressed in a white dress who would chase people around that accompanied a black pig. The Dalahan sometimes appeared as impish creatures. These are demonic spirits looking things that headless men on horses were carrying their heads, which is where you get jack-o'-lanterns from. Riding flame-eyed horses, their appearance was a death omen to anyone that encountered them. So I hope you guys are seeing as I'm reading the History Channel, these are all demonic witchcraft death seances. A group of hunters known as the Fairy Hosts might also hunt on Samhain and kidnap people, similar to the slog who would come from the West and enter houses and steal souls during Samhain. As the Middle Age progressed, so did the celebrations of the Fire Festival and bonfires. Um, this was near farms, they came, it came a tradition where they were protected from fairies and witches. Carved turnips called jack-o'-lanterns began to appear, attached by strings and sticks and embedded with coal, later the Irish would switch to pumpkins. In Wales, men tossed wood at each other and played violent games and set off fireworks in Northern England. Okay, the tradition of dumb supper began during this time where this is where candy came in and food came in. As Christi look at, Listen to this, John. As Christianity gained a foothold in the pagan communities, church leaders, look at this, church leaders attempted to reframe Samhain as a Christian celebration. The Pope Boniface in the 5th century moved the celebration to May 13th and sacrificed it and um, specified it as a day of celebrating the saints and the martyrs. The fire festivals of October and November did not end this decree. In the ninth century, Pope Gregory moved the celebration back to October 31st, I'm sorry, back to the October and declared November 1st All Souls Day. This was them trying to Christianize Halloween and that would, day would follow to November 2nd. Neither new holiday did away with the pagan rituals October 31st, First became known as Hollow's Eve or Halloween and contained many pagan rituals and practices. Again, this all this information is from a non-Christian source. So this is what the world says about Halloween. Trick-or-treating is said to have been derived from ancient Scottish practices in the nights leading to Samhain. In Ireland, the practice of putting on costumes and going door to door and singing songs to the dead, cakes were given out as payments. Halloween pranks were a tradition of Samhain. Through ancient celebrations, tricks were um, typically blamed on demonic spirits or fairies. A broad revival of Samhain started in the, eight, the 1980s with the growing popularity of Wicca. So the Wicca movement, which I'm going to be exposing next week, brought back these Halloween demonic rituals in the 1980s and traditions. 
I'm almost done here. The Wicca celebration of Samhain takes on many forms from traditional fire celebrations to modern Halloween to getting out candy, dressing up kids, and so on and so forth. Wiccans look at Samhain as the passing of the year and they incorporate common Wiccan practices into the celebration. In the Druid tradition, Samhain celebrates the dead with a festival on October 31st and usual feature of bonfire and communicating with the dead. American pagans! Man, this is so crazy. American pagans hold music and dance celebrations called the witch's ball during Samhain. And then I have a whole history of trick-or-treating, which I won't go into because it's too long. All right. So that is the story. It, it's all, go ahead, it's John. all there. It's all there. I mean, it's in black and white. <laughs> the devil is telling you, this is what you're buying into. This is what you're coming into. This is the contract. I put it in your face. Now just sign it. Just sign it. How you sign it? You celebrate it. You signed a contract by celebrating. We are in contract with the cross, Jesus Christ. We Come celebrate on. Good Friday. That I celebrate Good Friday because I'm in contract. I'm in agreement. I, I, I God has purchased me. God has signed my adoption paper by the blood of Jesus Christ. I celebrate the resurrection because I'm in. I mean, I'm in in one with Jesus. When we, the devil is saying to you, I'm offering you these things. There's no light to it, nothing but darkness and rituals and practices and demonic activity. Come on in, join the party. And you and you still walk into the devil's den. And John, this is from the Secular <laughs> History Channel. Because people in the chat say, oh, this is just you crazy Christians. My wife, my husband doesn't believe it. I just read you an article just posted last or two weeks ago from the History Channel saying this is the start of Samhain, which is what we call Halloween, the Day of the Dead. And this is all not a Christian perspective. And all you hear is communicating with the dead, which the Bible prohibits worshiping the dead, doing festivals to spirits, communicating the barrier between the spirit realm being separated and loosed. And now you can kind of just go in and out of the spiritual realm. And here we have Christians, followers of Yahweh of Jesus saying, you brothers are legalistic. It's really not that big of a deal. Listen, it's clear as day. Christians have no part in Halloween. We should not be promoting it. We should not be doing it. Now, some of you might say, brother Isaiah, can't we redeem Halloween? and make it Christian? No. Here's why, because the word redeem means to buy back. When the Bible says Christ has redeemed us, Christ has bought us back. We've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, the spirit of disobedience that works in the sons of disobedience. We've gotten delivered into God's kingdom. God bought us back. God does not want to redeem pagan holidays. Redeeming means to buy something back. God is not trying to buy a pagan holiday back. God is not interested in redeeming something that the that is the devil's holiday so like you can't redeem let me just give you a dramatic example you can't redeem the ouija board you can't redeem um new age seances you can't redeem the uh the you can't redeem you know positive energy and yoga people say i'm just going to redeem yoga yoga's hindu it's demonic yeah. it's prayer stances to foreign gods so we're not going to try to redeem and make Christian yoga. We're not making, you know, they try to redeem tarot cards. Now they have angel cards. It's still mm -hmm. demonic. God oh, is angel not, boards. Angel boards. Yeah, angel you boards. Your boards. It's the same thing. It's unredeemable. So these are not things that God is interested in redeeming. These are not things that God is looking to turn around and use for his glory and use for his good. These are things that we should not partake in. As the book of Ephesians says, we should not partake. We should have no place. We should put on the armor of God and withstand and fight and come against these things. And and the Bible says, expose these unfruitful works of darkness. So is there anything else you wanted to add before well, we kind no, of close I, the Halloween listen, chapter and I move think, in? I think, I think you put the icing on the cake. Now, if you want to still sleep with the devil and pay later, that's up to you.